Our study is focused on understanding the context of economic growth and specifically how that affects women's economic empowerment. Um, and what we're really interested in understanding is as women become more involved in the labor market in different sectors of the labor market, um, how does their physical transportation to and from work have an impact on their ability to achieve economic empowerment? So for example, in places like Pakistan and Nigeria, where we'll, we will be working, um, getting a sense for women's feelings of security and safety as they're going to and from work. Um, and how the existence of um, protections may, or the lack of protections may have an impact on their participation in the labor force. Uh, for example, if they're being harassed regularly on public transportation, um, that that may have an impact um, in their ability to um, achieve um, economic self-sufficiency and empowerment. Uh, research is particularly important because public transportation is one of the fewest places where people from very different backgrounds come uh, together physically. Uh, and especially in developing countries, uh, women experience a, a, an elevated level uh, of uh, crime, especially sexual harassment uh, and other types of uh, violent victimization. And we believe um, the fear of victimization as well as the actual uh, risk of victimization uh, hinders women's participation uh, in economic and non-economic activities and also enjoyment of those activities. On a day-to-day -day basis in cities uh, around the developing world, women face uh, uh, a number of problems in trying to access the labor market. Uh, they are disproportionately uh, victims of abuse and um, of vi even violence in some cases uh, in public transport networks and so on. Uh, even walking on the street can become uh, a problem for them. So we are trying to create some real evidence from the ground uh, and give advice to policymakers on ways in which they can actually make life so much easier for these women who can participate in the labor force. The reason why I think this project is a bit different from much of the other work that we've done over the years is that this is built on a genuine partnership between four institutions, three of which are based in developing countries. Uh, we have a partner in West Africa, another in the Horn of Africa, and one in South Asia. Uh, each region has their own sort of unique dynamics of uh, how growth and female empowerment are linked, but I think there are also a lot of commonalities across them. So uh, we feel that having our uh, partners from three or four different parts of the world actually enables us to do interesting comparative analyses across these four regions. I'm hoping through this study that uh, the policy recommendations that will come out of the study, not just from our team at Urban, but through all of the partners on the study working on the ground locally and um, a lot of the different countries that we're partnering with, um, that it'll lead to policy recommendations on the local level, on the national level, and the international level that are more specifically tailored to including gender as um, a priority when thinking about economic development. Um, so I'm hoping that in the end what we achieve is more inclusive development for women in the countries that we're studying um, and that we can really help to highlight the importance of taking gender into account when we're thinking of economic growth. And if we leave that behind, we're essentially living, leaving half of a workforce behind.